Continuing on with respect to the Center for Understanding Change, Lori Parrott manages the National Infrastructure Simulation and Analysis Center. And right in line with the theme that we've been talking about, complex adaptive systems, she is working on what happens when we disrupt those systems, except in this case, it's about analyzing the impact of natural and human-caused disruptions on U.S. critical infrastructures for the Department of Homeland Security. Please help me welcome Lori Parrott. Can I just drive from here? Is that all right? Okay. So um, thank you very much. I do represent the National Infrastructure Simulation and Analysis Center, which is the program of record, the manifestation of the work that John Veller discussed in the video you saw earlier. But I'm going to tell you about something larger, which is Sandia and how it approaches sustainability. What is a nuclear weapons lab doing uh, working in anything called sustainability, we came very quickly to the understanding over our 70-year history that national security is linked with energy, climate, and infrastructure security. Uh, John Holdren is um, the president's science advisor and the chair of PCAST, and this is his quote, without energy, there's no economy. Without climate, there's no environment. Therefore, without energy and environment, there is no security. Uh, that is bred into Sandia's DNA as well. Sandia has a 40-year history in energy, though we began as an offshoot of Los Alamos, um, just sort of driving by and waving at the Santa Fe Institute as we drive between the two laboratories. We started in the nuclear weapons program. We developed very deep science competencies as a result of that, as well as systems engineering skills and talents. Uh, we applied those in the 1970s, starting to the energy programs. Um, from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to NRC CASC certi uh, certification for the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission to the opening of uh, solar, so renewable, um, and through to now moving into bioenergy and a broad set. Whoops. Um, let me tell you that we have an energy, climate, and infrastructure strategic management area. And I show this menu of items to show you kind of the breadth of the work that Sandia engages in, from traditional renewable energy over on the left side, nuclear, transportation, and energy efficiency, into climate, atmospheric monitoring, modeling, and analysis, carbon, water, resilient infrastructure systems, because we understand that sustainability means dealing with change, and that's where the NESAC and the infrastructure work sits, cyber, electrical, international, and then our enabling science technologies, discovery, systems analysis, regulations and policies, and a special focus within our uh, laboratory on ARPA-E. The vision we have is to enhance security and prosperity through sustainable transformative approaches. This website, energy.sandia.gov, will give you more depth than I would be able to today on any of this breadth of programs. But we have four objectives in our strategy for energy, climate, and infrastructure security. Anticipate and enable policy and regulatory decisions. To me, that's a very ripe area for a partnership with C4UC in terms of decision support because we have 1,200 models. You ought to see the cow model. It's really fun. <laughs> Accelerating solutions. Where are the laboratories, and I am speaking beyond Sandy at this point, where are the DOE laboratories as a set, Los Alamos, Argonne, Oak Ridge, Lawrence Livermore, have very deep capabilities that they can apply to accelerate solutions that are deployed through industry. It's a significant goal. Steward the competencies. Continue to keep our skills sharp so that we are of value to the nation. And then support international engagement. Just as Brad said, the U.S. can't exist on its own. We have to think and act globally, and the labs can be a vehicle to do that. These are an example of the different kinds of challenges that we've identified in each of our areas, energy, climate, infrastructure, and enabling capabilities. And I'm just going to go quickly through their program goals very fast so you again see the diversity from um, reducing the carbon footprint to what our project called sun, sunshine to petrol, sunlight to, to a synthetic gas, solar technologies, nuclear reactor designs, and a deep borehole disposal system to deal with nuclear waste. 
within climate, assessing prosperity and security risks, gathering and analysis systems to enable the U.S. to sign a global climate treaty, a credible technical path for a DOE 2015 goal of an industrial scale demonstration of carbon capture, a transition from fossil fuel to environmentally sustainable energy sources, and technology solutions that make us a success in water safety, security, and sustainability. Within infrastructure, increasing the resilience of the U.S. critical infrastructure system by understanding their interdependencies, growing critical cybersecurity particularly, and this feeds off what Chris was just talking to you about, the cyber vulnerabilities we're facing. 30% renewable energy penetration into an energy surety microgrid, and reducing the risk of energy supply disruptions from global strategic sources to the U.S. and key national security installations. And finally, sitting at the base, our enabling capability, the deep science that we really rely on to be a resource. Uh, discovery science for fundamental breakthroughs, a strong systems analysis capability, industry development of transformational energy technologies through ARPA-E, and advanced electrical storage technologies and new technologies for enhanced battery safety. I'm not going to talk very much about these, but I want to illustrate this is a representative of the kind of work from Sunshine to Petrol on the upper left, funded by an internal research program, the Sunshine to Petrol LDRD, as we call it, to the solar glitter, to multi-effort works on modeling and simulation, the Community Earth System Models Petascale Ready Dynamic Core. Partnerships across domains, across state, local, federal, industry, and academic with the Vermont Sandia Partnership, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. And finally, a lab like Sandia um, supports, supports disaster recovery and emergency response, and so in-country support to the Fukushima Daiichi disaster. The Department of Energy took a look at the Quadrennial Defense Review, if you're familiar with that vehicle and how it aligns strategy for uh, national security issues, and said, gee, maybe we need a Quadrennial Energy Review. Well, maybe that's a step too far. Let's take an intermediate step and develop a quadrennial technology review. It's called the QTR. And they've identified six DOE strategies focusing on energy supply and demand, both stationary and transport. In addition, now DOE, Department of Homeland Security, and Department of Defense are starting to work together. DOE has its quadrennial technology review on the left identifying their major goals. Department of Defense has its major goals. And the Department of Homeland Security, it doesn't have a quadrennial review yet, <laughs> but it's got a strategic plan. In addition, DOE and DOD have gone a step further and identified some major agreements to begin to work to uh, reduce the energy consumption of our national security enterprise. And finally, this is the partnership I wanted to talk to you about. We're very excited. In fact, some of my staff just came back from Vermont last weekend. There's a new partnership uh, with the state of Vermont to build the first statewide smart grid. This will be a test bed to develop a scalable smart grid framework for the entire northeastern United States. Sandia's expertise is really contributing in risk assessment and the cyber. This is one of the priorities in the Quadrennial Technology Review, and this is sponsored by the Department of Energy and RPE. So I want to conclude just by saying that uh, the national labs and Sandia's programs are built to support deployment by others. Our goal is to serve as a resource, and the programs and approaches at Sandia have been developed to try to be deployed out in industry. With that, I'll conclude. Thank you. I just want to make a statement. Lori is in. Lori was the top of that chart, with all of those folks uh, in those areas underneath her, and uh, I had the pleasure of spending a day with her and her teams, and we were just blown away by the variety and depth of the uh, the work that they're doing. And Lori is going to be presenting as part of uh, Mayutic Parataxis. Uh, tomorrow, one piece of what I think is just earth-shattering 
uh, work uh, that will be directly related to uh, our thinking in terms of uh, resilience. So I, please make sure you're, you're there tomorrow afternoon. Any other questions? Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, is there any focus or any understanding about looking at the possibility of manufacturing infrastructure vulnerability? Um, let me see. We have had a manufacturing program in the past when technology transfer was a larger focus within the Department of Energy. We do still do some work with industry, um, notably GM. We're in some engagement now with Coca-Cola where we look at um, not only supply chain risk, but their manufacturing risks as well, and optimization of process. We still maintain the responsibility for the nuclear weapons program of um, manufacturing neutron generators. And um, that's a wonderful test for a laboratory um, that might have thought it could throw designs over the fence to actually have to work with a production, a production facility and understand uh, the difficulties of manufacturing. Okay, with that, let's give Lori a big hand. <laughs>